you can see this is a food web, right? And if you can see, the main part of this food web is this pig. And this pig eats everything. It'll eat snakes. It'll eat algae. It'll eat plants, grass, deer, crustaceans, right? This pig is ruining the whole food web because it just eats everything. There's nothing it won't eat. And it's destroying the food web. And when you destroy a food web, you create imbalance. You create an imbalanced food chain in an ecosystem, which is not good. Just like what I was talking about with the pythons, right? Remember, I was talking about the pythons. You guys read about the pythons or those fish or those monkeys in Florida that were brought in, people had them as pets. They didn't know what to do with them, so they just let them loose. That, that's ruining these food webs in the Everglades in Florida. This pig is doing the same thing now. So animals can ruin a food web, but you know what else can ruin a food web? Us as humans can ruin food webs. And as a matter of fact, we are probably the worst at ruining food webs, humans. Which brings us to what you guys are gonna do for your assignment this week. So let me go to, now this assignment is gonna be an Amplify. So I'm gonna go to Amplify. Let's go to Amplify. Okay. Type it, like, let me make, can, can you guys type yes in the chat if you can see my Amplify screen? Type yes, because I, I wanna make sure you guys can see this. Let me see if you. Type, let me see. All right, you guys can see it. All right, so. In Amplify, so let me let me go out to the beginning and Amplify. So if I go, if I was in Amplify, right, I logged in and I go down, not Geology of Mars, not Plate Motion, not Rock Transformations. We're gonna go all the way down to Population and Resources and we're gonna go to Chapter 3, Indirect Effects and Ecosystems. This one we're gonna kind of skip around. Not 3.1, but 3.2. Three point two, and we're gonna do three point two. Now this assignment, which I already put in the classroom, is not gonna be due till Monday. So understand this assignment is not due till Monday because you guys have to do all five parts. You're gonna do one warm up, two reading, three the simulation, four this uh, thinking about indirect effects in five homework. So you're gonna do all five sections. So let me go over each section. Let me go over it right now. So first section, students predict how a population might be affected by other populations in the same ecosystem. Now, think about a food web. You see this simple food web. Imagine you're in the savanna in Africa. You got grass. The zebra eats the grass. The lion eats the zebra. Hyenas also eat zebras. Understand this about a food web, just like in the last one I showed you with the pigs. You see the arrow? The arrow is from the grass is going into the zebra. Why? Because I want you to imagine the energy from the grass goes into the zebra when the zebra eats the grass. And then the zebra goes into the lion when the lion eats the zebra or the zebra goes into the hyena that's why the arrow is going from the zebra to the hyena or from the zebra to the lion food webs just show energy flow right because it's all about energy why do we eat you guys probably ate earlier today why did you eat because you needed energy you, you now you can't get energy from the sun because we're not plants so we have to eat animals or other plants to get our energy same thing with the lion, same thing with the hyena, same thing with the zebra. The grass, if, if, if it would have shown another picture, there'd be the sunlight, right? Because that's where the grass gets its energy. Now, if you look at this, lions and hyenas, lions don't eat hyenas, and hyenas don't eat lions. But they do affect each other. 
So if you look at this question, the question says, what do you think would happen to the lion population if the hyena population increases in size? So if there were more hyenas all of a sudden, what would happen to the lion population? Somebody share with me, what would happen to the lion population? And this one, if you can verbally say, I want someone to say, what would happen to the lions if all of a sudden the hyena population just went way up? The lion population would decrease. Why? For the lack of food. Why would there be lack of, why would there be a lack of food? Explain that. Because hyenas will be hunting zebras and then there'll be less zebras causing a little bit of starvation. Yes, exactly, that's exactly right. You see, <coughs> there are more hyenas, the hyenas gotta eat. So they would eat, they would eat more zebras. Well, if they eat more zebras, there's less zebras for the lions because the lions and the hyenas are in direct competition. So if you're in competition for food and all of a sudden your competition, they increase in size, but they're gonna eat more food. So it's gonna leave less food for you. So your population is going to decrease. You're right. So the lion population would decrease. Now, call this, let me go. Now let, let's look at this. I want you guys, so you'll it, do that. And then when you get to the, explain your answer, like we just did. So that's section one, section one is pretty easy. And then section two. Now, section two is, you're gonna read this article on jellyfish. Let me this, and you're gonna annotate. When I say annotate, you need at least four annotations. So let me just kind of review what this article is talking about. So if you look at this article, this article is talking about jellyfish. And what it's talking about are, there's, there's two types of jellyfish in a certain part of Africa. And if you look at the map, you got what's called, now in Namibia, which is a uh, Northern Bungala area. And then you got South Africa, which is the Southern Bungala. So in the North, you got one type of jellyfish. And in the South, you got another type of jellyfish. You can see it, right? You got North, you got South. Come on really quick, there's some more people trying to enter. Let me admit them. Okay. So you got, you got North, in south. Now, what happened is this. Oops. Okay. So you got north and south. Now, ecologists, which are scientists, when they were studying these jellyfish populations, they noticed that in the 1950s, you know, the amount of jellyfish in the north and the amount of jellyfish in the south was about the same. Okay. The amount of jellyfish in the north and the south was about the same. Now, what happened is in the 50s, in the north, okay, in the north, they actually said, you know what? Well, actually, this I actually started in the south. In the south, they said, you know what? We're going to limit the amount of fishing done in the south. So they said, you can't fish anymore in the South. Now, when I say fish, I'm talking about fish for sardines. So they were, so in the South, they passed laws that fishermen can no longer fish in the Southern part of Wendala. But in the North, they didn't put any laws. So what happened is this. Now, I also get a simple food chain. So you got jellyfish, the jellies, and you got sardines, which are the, which is their type of fish. They both eat zooplankton. So in the north, there was no rules, right? And so because there was no rules, fishermen kept fishing for these sardines. So the sardine population slowly went down because it was unlimited fishing. But in the south, the sardine population stayed the same. So what do you think is probably gonna happen to the jellyfish in the north if the sardine population keeps going down. Someone tell me, what's gonna happen to the jellies, jellyfish, if the sardine population keeps getting fished and there's, there's less of the sardines? What's gonna happen to the jelly? How is that gonna affect the jellyfish if there's less sardines? It can get overpopulated. 
Yeah, it's gonna get overpopulated because the jellyfish are gonna have an unlimited food supply because there's not gonna be any competition. So the zooplankton, right? So what happens is this. What happens is the sardine populations go down. You see the yellow circle. The jellyfish population goes up and up and up because they have more zooplankton. This is what's called an indirect effect. So there was, because of the overfishing in Northern Mongala, the sardine, the, uh, of sardines, the jellyfish population went up. In the South, the jellyfish population didn't go up. They actually went down a little bit. And scientists back then, they couldn't figure it out, like why are there so many jellyfish all of a sudden in the North? And there's not that many in the South when they used to be the same. But then scientists was, oh, it's because there's overfishing. Like we're causing this. We're taking out the competition for the jellyfish. There's no more competition. So that's why there's so many jellyfish. And that's basically what this article is talking about. It goes into a little bit more detail, but that's basically what this, talk, this article is talking about. So read the article, write down four annotations as you're reading it, okay? And if you go to one, you see it says one, two, three at the bottom. Two is just kind of showing you that food chain again, right? Competition, that's what it's talking about. And then three, uh, cause, effects, indirect effect. Indirect effect just means the result of one cause leading to an effect that causes one or more other effects. Meaning the cause was this, you're fishing, overfishing. The effect was there's less sardines. The indirect effect was there's gonna be more jellyfish. Okay, so that's two. So we got that. So we got one, the warm up, then we two, which you know, you guys just have to read the article. Hold on, um, annotate it, okay? Then go to three, the simulation. Now, this is the one that I really gotta explain because this is a little confusing. So, this is a sim. When I say sim and amplify sim just means simulation. So, it, let, let's read what it says. S investigating competition in sim part one. Some populations use the same resource, such as eating the same resource population for food. In this sim mission, you will first find two populations that compete for the same resource. Then you will try to increase one population by changing the other. Open the population resources sim and go to six population mode. So basically, let, let me explain how to do this. So all you guys gotta do is click on where it says sim. And then it will bring, it says, are you using an iPad? And I'm not, you could use an iPad, but I'm not using an iPad. So I'm gonna click no. Okay, hold on, shit. Okay, it says three populations, three populations, six populations. I'm gonna click on the one that says six. So let me, okay, here we go. So what is this? What are we looking at? So you got a simulation of different animals. If this is an ecosystem. You got green leaves, which are the green, you, you can kind of see the green one. You got wee bugs, this is a myth. These aren't real animals. You got these things called sting wings. You got fur bills, scale beaks, and claw cats, right? So you got four of these animals. Now, let me go back so you guys can see this. Let, let me actually look, once you guys look at this. If you look at the actual food chain, so you got wee bugs eat the green leaves, fur bills eat the wee bugs, but stingwings also eat the wee bugs. So fur bills eat the wee bugs and stingwings eat the wee, bug, wee bugs. Scale beaks eat the fur bills and claw cats at the top of the food chain, they eat the scale beaks. So this is the food, this is actual food chain here that you're looking at. And so, if I go back to the simulation, you can see this is, you know, just the ecosystem that eat different animals eating other animals. And the green leaves go up and down, the wee bugs go up and down, the skin population goes up and down, the fear bugs go up and down, the scale bees go up and down, the claw cats go up and down. Now, what the question is, if you go back, let me go back to one. The question says, Open the population resources sim 
go to the Food Web Overlay, we're dealing with that. Find two populations that compete for the same resource. Well, what two, let's look at this. What two animals are fighting for the same resource? Can someone tell me? If you look at this food chain, what two animals are trying to eat the same animal? Who can, I want someone to sh shout it out. Or write it in the chat. If you don't want to shout it, write it in the chat. What two animals are going after the same animal? Okay, fur ball, yes, wait, fur balls and wee bugs? No, the fur balls are eating the wee bugs. I'm talking about what two animals are competing. They're in direct competition. It's just two animals on this food chain. What two? Fur ball, fur bills is one, fur bills and what else? The fur bills and what else? If you don't want to shout it, you can type it in the food, in the, in the, in the chat. Some of you guys are being shy. Shout it out. If you don't want to shout it out, you guys can just type it in the chat. Fur bills and yes, you got it. Fur bills and stingwings. So Emily, you're right. Fur bills and stingwings. They are competing for the same food, right? So let me go back to this. So I'm gonna write that. I'm gonna write the fur bill population and the stingwing population compete for the wee bugs, right? So I type I type that in now. I go to two. It says plan the change you will make to increase the stingwing population. So let's say I wanted to increase the stingwings, right? So if I wanted to increase the stingwings, what should I do to the fur bills? That is what we want to figure out. Should I decrease them or should I increase them? Again, to it to make let's say again the question is asking if you want the stingwing population to go up what should i do to the fur bills this is the same thing what i was talking about you know when we're talking about the lion and the hyena or the jellyfish and the sardines they're in competition the stingwing and the fur bills they're also in competition so what what it's saying is what should i do to the stingwing population I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. How can I make the stinging population go up? So should I increase, should I decrease? Well, we can actually do that in the simulation. So it says launch the population resources sim and go to six populations mode. So let the sim run for 40 time units. Make the change to the fur bills that you selected above. Remember that making a bigger change will cause a bigger effect. You can lock you can lock the furball population. Press play and let the sim run for another 100 time units. Go to analyze and use the range window to observe the population sizes. So what that's saying is this, if I go back, let me, now, if you wanna refresh, let me go refresh, reset, reset it. I'm gonna let it run for 40 seconds. If you see the time, if each one is a second or in the other, uh, uh, reading they call it units think of it as a year like each second or unit that goes by is like a year right so now we're at 37 38 39 okay 40 41 it's fine if, you, if you're off by one that's fine so I'm at 41 right so remember we want the sting wings to go up so to make the sting wings go up it says what should I do the fur bills should I make it go down should I make it go up right if I make it go up Maybe you think it should go, it should go up. I, I'm increasing it, right? So if I press play, let it, for, it says, let it go for another 100 units. So it's at 41, so I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna stop it when it gets to 141, right? Because that's a, another 100 units. So let's see. Now I didn't say you should, I'm not telling you guys what's right, right or wrong, but we're just kind of, you know, playing with it, seeing, seeing what's going to happen. Maybe I think I should increase the fur bill. Maybe that's what I think. So I'm going to stop it at 141. We're at 107, 110. Let's wait till it gets to 140. Gets to 140. I'm going to stop it. Okay, it's almost there. All right, I'm going to stop. So. 
Then I'm gonna go to analyze. Click analyze. Okay. If you look, the Stangling population, it didn't really make much of a change. It's kind of at zero, okay? Here. So maybe I should decrease it, but I want you guys to figure that out. I don't, I don't wanna do it all for you guys, okay? So figure that out. So you guys see what I did with to analyze. Now I go back to run. It'll do it again. So you got to play around with this. And then you go to analyze and see what happened. Go back to run, right, to reset it. Right, how did, how did you do that, right? Would you throw it on my screen? I don't even know how you did that. Okay, so let me go back to the amplify. So play with it and then, you know, look at the results. It says, what happened to the wee bugs? What happened to the sting wings, right? When it says what happened to it, that just means when you go back to Um, you go back to analyze, you just look at what happens in the go up, they go down, they increase, they decrease, just look at it. Now, uh, let me go back. All right, it says explain why the change you made caused the thing population to change. Okay, so just explain it. And what change would cause a decrease? So you, how would you make it decrease? Make the fur balls go up or down? All right, so that's all you gotta do for, that's what you gotta do for section three. Section four. Section four is, section four is just like the warm up, right? So what do you think would happen to the lion population if the hyena population increased? Assume that populations were stable before this change. You know, same, actually it's like the same question, right? So that's easy. And then the last thing, section five, the homework. You're gonna do the same thing in the simulation, right? Uh, in in class, you increase the staying population by changing the furbial population. Now you will make the change to the furbial population that will cause the sting wing population to decrease. So same thing, what's gonna make the sting wing population increase? Okay, do it with the simulation. It says launch the sim, same thing, 100 units. Answer the question, just like you did before. And then, now understand this, in the homework, there's two parts. There's doing a simulation again, and then there's also, if I go to section two, you also need to read this article. Now this article is talking about buffaloes, bringing back the buffalo. It's talking about Native Americans and the role of the buffalo in their ecosystem. This is also has to do with uh, disrupting ecosystems. So four annotations with this, right? And then you're gonna click hand in. So understand this, on the homework, there's two parts. There's section one, which is, the simulation again in the section two you guys have to read the article and then hand it in okay so i hope everybody got that you got to do all five sections section one warm up section two reading on jellyfish section three the simulation section four which is just like the warm up again i'm not sure why i did that but just answer it again and then section five which is the homework it's two parts it's the simulation again and it's the article on the buffaloes. So that is what you guys gotta do. This is not due until Monday. Monday, Monday, you guys you guys got five days to do this. So that should be plenty of time to turn this in. So again, this is a, it's just uh, talking again really about how people and animals disrupt ecosystems. And it's also talking about uh, when animals compete for the same food. And if you increase the population, how that changes other animals indirectly or directly, okay? So, 